welcome to Sudley Online Church Service. Today is March 7th. It's an amazing day, and uh, I hope you have enjoyed the spring weather. It feels like spring. There's sunshine going on this past week. Uh, I dressed up just because I felt so good about the snow disappearing and the sun coming out. And uh, I hope you are enjoying your time as well. I'm so glad you could join us. I'm Paul, I'll be a worship leader, and we do have a few announcements. We're continuing our adult spiritual growth classes Sunday morning via Zoom. We have two of them, as you know. One is a Sermon on the Mount, A Beginner's Guide to Kingdom of Heaven. That is uh, run by Joyce Kennison, and you can contact her for where they are. It is not too late to join in, jump into either of these if you have not yet. We want everyone to come in, and uh, you won't miss a beat if you just step right in. The second is Screw Tape Letters by C.S. Lewis, a classic. This class is powerful as well. And Tim Serwinski is the point of contact. Contact him for where they are. Easter lilies help celebrate the season and decorate the sanctuary for Easter Sunday. Now, if you join us online, you're thinking, ah, oh, we don't ever get to see them. I am gonna make you a promise that if you buy Easter lilies, I will make sure we take a long shot and show where your Easter lilies are because the in-person people shouldn't be the only ones that get to enjoy this. That's not fair. You should as well. So if you give to the Easter lilies, I promise you, I will make sure this stage looks beautiful, okay? Order for your family or in memory or honor of. Need an order form, email or call the church office and a form will be either emailed or mailed to you. Orders must be received though by March 15th. That is a next Monday. Not tomorrow, but next Monday. Next, new ministry. It's exciting. Long for Christian fellowship, prayer circles. Want to stay connected? Prayer circles. We're forming small groups called prayer circles. Just, I don't know why I'm so passionate about it, but I love to pray. And I love to get with people who love to pray. So there you go. Circles will meet once a month via Zoom or in person for sharing life and prayers with each other. Contact Bobby Wilhelm as the prayer chair. Guys, it's so awesome that Bobby has stepped back in and said, I see where we need to step up our efforts and that's in connecting through prayer, especially during this time. I really encourage you to find a prayer circle in this church and it's once a month, you've got the time, I promise you you do, to get with other believers and pray. You'll see changes in your life. It's gonna be awesome. Amen. Finally, giant indoor yard sale. On March 13th, from 8 a.m. to 3, that's a Saturday, we are going to be holding a moving sale at Charlene's house. It's inside, you get to go in the house. You get to walk around, check out the different rooms, see what's going on, and see everything priced, and take something home for a great deal. Most of the proceeds will go back into God's kingdom here at Sudley. We are so thankful for Charlene and Cal being willing to give a donation back to the church of what is sold. Thank you so much. Please mark your calendars, March 13th. All right, will you join me for the opening prayer this morning? Heavenly Father, you are so great. You are so magnificent. Lord, there are times where we can take for granted that you have asked us to come into your presence. We take for granted that the king has actually said, come into the throne room and talk with me. God, if there was a president on earth that were to say to me, come on into the, the office and sit with me, I would be marking it down on my calendar. I would get so excited. I'd get butterflies in my stomach. I'd be thinking about what should I say. But so often, God, we forget that you, king of the universe, invite us the same way. Yet, Lord, some of us have lost our fervor, our passion, those butterflies of meeting the king of kings and lord of lords. Would you restore unto us the joy of our salvation? Renew a right spirit within us yes. so that we may honor you and approach you with reverence and respect. Yes. We give you this service. We love you in Jesus' name. Amen. Make me 
my pardon, this I see, nothing but the blood of Jesus, for my cleansing, this my plea, nothing but the blood of Most of you guys have read the book, seen the movie, or at least heard about the story of Aladdin and his wonderful lamp. In one version of the story, Aladdin worked in a shop that exchanged new lamps for old ones. Aladdin's job was to polish the lamps and make them look like new. One day, as he was polishing a lamp, a genie came out of the lamp and promised to grant Aladdin anything he wished for. With the help of the genie, Aladdin gained great wealth and won the love of a beautiful princess. Wouldn't it be wonderful to have your every wish come true? You might think so, but the truth is, sometimes the things we wish for aren't good for us. That's what a young man discovered in today's Bible story. Our Bible story today is about a young man who had three wishes. He wanted a lot of money, number one. Number two, he wanted to travel and see the world. Number three, he wanted to be his own boss. All right, how many of you guys wish for all three of those things, right? Well, the young man got his wishes, but they were not granted to him by a genie. The young man went to his father and asked him to give him the inheritance that he would get when his father died. Even though the father was sad that his son wanted to leave, he gave him his share of the family's fortune and the young man left home and traveled all around the world. He visited all of the places he'd always wanted to go and did whatever he wanted to do. He was happy that no one was telling him what to do. Since the young man had a lot of money, if he saw something he wanted, he just bought it. And since he had a lot of money, he also had many friends, right? So this sounds like a very happy story, doesn't it? Well, that isn't the end of the story. After a while, the young man ran out of money. When he ran out of money, his friends left. They probably weren't really good friends, were they? He was so desperate that he went to work for a man who sent him to feed his pigs. The young man was so hungry that he would gladly have eaten the food that he was feeding to the pigs. Have you ever been so hungry that you would eat food that you would feed to a pig? Well, he was that hungry. And as he looked at the filthy pig pen, he thought about the mess he had made of his life. He thought about his father and the home he had left behind. Even a servant in my father's house lives better than this, the young man said to himself. I will return to my father and tell him that I'm sorry for the way I've behaved and asked him to give me a job as one of his servants. Do you think the father was willing to take him back? Yes, but not as a servant. He welcomed him back home as his son. He called his servants together and told them, let's have a feast and celebrate. For this son of mine was lost, but now is found. Well, the story had a happy ending after all, didn't it? This story that Jesus told is really a story about you and me and the way we sometimes behave. Sometimes you and I make bad choices. 
Just like the young man in our story, we sometimes wish for things that are not good for us. We sometimes don't want to listen to God and obey what the Bible tells us we should do. When we act that way, we really make a mess of our life. Well, I have good news for you. Just like the father in our story, God, our Heavenly Father, is always willing to take us back if we will admit that we were wrong and return to Him. Let's pray. Dear Father, we sometimes make bad choices. Thank you for being a loving Father who will always take us back when we come home to you. Amen. Thank you, Katie. Now I think we'll go into our prayer and praises section of the service. I've got a few praises. I'm so excited. There are members celebrating their 80th birthday in the past few weeks. Nancy Harover, Nancy, happy birthday. Uh, Norman Hertz and Doug McGuire, congratulations, happy birthday. You are so young and full of life, each one of you. I'm so glad to know you. My wife also um, celebrated half of that. She just turned 40 this past week. She doesn't mind me saying that. Um, happy birthday, sweetie, love you. Andy Anderson is improving from surgery from glaucoma. I had lunch with Andy. He is an amazing man of God. Love Andy. Praise the Lord for the opportunity to worship together and for his protection over our church family. And can we just say praise the Lord for a bit of sunshine? I really Amen. think that's a great one. Some new requests. Joyce Kennison, as you've probably seen in our emails, was diagnosed with COVID-19. She attended a few Sundays ago and... Uh, and after that started to have symptoms and, and let us all know, and we are praying for you, Joyce. We truly believe that God can heal all diseases and sickness, and he will do so in your life. Pray for school administrators, teachers, parents, and students as students return back to the classrooms. I know for some this is so exciting, others it's kind of a bummer. Uh, wherever you shake out on that, let's pray for those that are back in school, um, that they stay safe and they stay positive, and it will be good. Some continuing prayer needs. Noreen Eckstein, suffering from pulmonary issues. Pray for improvement with her breathing. Continue to pray for Noreen. The Dodson family, Katie Mills' co-worker's father passed away. The mother is recovering from COVID-19 while battling cancer. That is uh, that is a double punch to the gut. We wanna pray for that family. Julie Heinley, Katie's Mill, Katie Mills' aunt client who passed away from a stroke and cancer. We just uh, reach out to these families that are dealing with cancer and all this sickness. It is just horrible. Linda Kepler is recovering from back surgery. We give God praise for that. We want to continue to pray. Bobby Marshall is recovering from surgery for oral cancer. She gave us a positive report, but we want to continue to pray for her. Joanne Lunsford would like prayers for recovery from surgeries. Prayers are also requested for her husband, Larry, who is caring for Joanne and his 97-year-old mother. So Larry is working double shifts with this and we want to pray for him as well. Al Kitchen's son-in-law, Kenneth Lester, recovering from open heart surgery. Pam Terosian, who grew up at Sudley, has oral cancer. She lives in Washington State. We'll get you more updates on that um, as we continue to pray. Joyce Kennison's brother, Ray, is in hospice care, continuing to um, live out his days there as uh, we pray for Ray. Terry Abate, Diane Miller, Vicki Runyon, and Linda Olson are continuing treatment to ensure they remain cancer free. This morning as we're filming, I said hi to Linda. She was uh, high spirits, talking with me, uh, asking about our kids. She's doing great. We're so thankful to have Linda and, we're, and these other amazing ladies who I pray for them. Heavenly Father, we uh, don't take it lightly that we have the opportunity to enter into your throne room with these requests. We don't take it lightly that you hear every single one of them. We don't take it lightly that you are a God who is interested in what we pray and how we pray, and when we pray. Mm. Lord, we don't take it lightly that you love every single person that we've mentioned and lifted up here today. And Lord, we just return back to you these needs of desperation, of desire to see a change or a healing or a touch or comfort. And God, we believe that you have all the answers, you have all of the anointing to do abundantly more than we could ever imagine. Yes. And God, we just lay it at your feet. We ask that you would do what only you can do. Lord, sometimes we're speechless with what's next or, or what's the next course of action or how will any good ever come of this, but we know you care about us. God, for every person dealing with cancer, I just destroyed in the name of Jesus to speak against it. For every person dealing with loss or heartache, I pray for peace. We love you, Lord. We love you, Lord, and we thank you. Now we pray the prayer you taught your disciples. Our Father, who art in heaven, 
hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. Our scripture reading for today comes from Luke chapter 15, uh, a longer passage, but a really good one. If you read along with me, if you have your Bibles open at home or uh, on your phone app, I'd love for you to read it uh, as well. Here we go. Then Jesus said, there was a man who had two sons. The younger of them said to his father, father, give me the share of the property that will belong to me. So he divided his property between them. A few days later, the younger son gathered all he had and traveled to a distant country. And there he squandered his property in dissolute living. When he had spent everything, a severe famine took place throughout the country and he began to be in need. So he went and hired himself out to one of the citizens of that country, who sent him to his fields to feed the pigs. He would gladly have filled himself with the pods that the pigs were eating, and no one gave him anything. But when he came to himself, he said, How many of my father's hired hands have bread enough and to spare, but here I am dying of hunger. I'll get up and go to my father, and I'll say to him, Father, I've sinned against heaven and before you. I'm no longer worthy to be called your son. Treat me like one of your hired hands. So he set off and went to his father. But while he was still far away off, his father saw him and was filled with compassion. He ran and put his arms around him and kissed him. Then he said to him, Father, I've sinned against heaven and before you. I'm no longer worthy to be called your son. But the father said to his slaves, Quickly, bring out a robe, the best one. Put it on him. Put a ring on his finger and sandals on his feet. And get the fatted calf and kill it and let us eat and celebrate. For this son of mine was dead and is alive again. He was lost and is found. And they began to celebrate. This is the word of God for the people of God. Thanks, Thanks be to God. To God. Uh, Pastor Paul, thank you so much for this special fervent prayer and also that uh, great reading of the Bible this morning. You brought the story alive. <laughs> that was good. Uh, Sudley Church family and friends, and thank you so much for your continued support for our ministry through your generous and even sacrificial offering. I really appreciate your generosity. And thank you for your continued support for uh, our love fund for our sister Vicky and her family during this time. And so we had a great success with a mission project to support, serve through the diaper or drive, right? I really appreciate all your help and praying hands and caring hearts for people who are in need during this time. Should we take a moment to uh, pray and bless our offering before the Lord? God, the ultimate owner of everything, the creator, the redeemer and sustainer of our lives. We come before you with gratitude, remembering who you are and what you have done for us. We are ever indebted to you for our existence, our breath, our life. Especially under this challenging time, we come back to you, Lord, counting our blessings and asking for your continued protection and shield over us. You know what your sons and daughters need even before we ask. We trust that you will pour out your blessings upon your sons and daughters as we walk through this time, leaning on your everlasting arms, standing on your promises. Help us to live our life according to your plan and purpose so that we may bring glory and honor to your name, enjoy a profound sense of fulfillment that comes from you. Wherever this offering is used, let your glory be manifest. People will celebrate and witness the powerful, tangible love of Jesus Christ. Thank you, Lord. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. Today's passage tells us a very familiar story of the prodigal son 
Uh, even non-Christians are familiar with this story. Through this story though, Jesus points out our serious relationship issues with God our Heavenly Father. Uh, how serious is it? Simply think of the younger son's rude and ridiculous demand to his father in the story, right? He said, Father, give me the share of the property that will belong to me. This spoiled child made this claim as if a portion of his father's property would naturally and automatically belong to him. He was entitled to it. Ah. His father was gracious enough to divide his property between his sons. Then what happened? A few days later, this younger kid collected all he received and traveled to a distant country to a faraway country where he would eventually celebrate his independence. Ah, there he squandered all his property in immoral living. What does this story tell about ourselves in our relationship with God, our Heavenly Father? Our willful rebellion against God, isn't it? A God, Heavenly Father, is the ultimate owner of everything, including our lives. We are originally created to enjoy our intimate relationship with God for eternity. Yet, for some reason, we all have that deep-rooted desire to keep things under our control. We desire to declare our own territory, just like, like immature teenagers sometimes, right? This is my life, this is my world, and we distance ourselves from God in a faraway country. What do we do? We build up our own world, celebrating self-autonomy, self-sufficiency, naively believing that we are capable, we are able to live our life on our own, apart from God. Doesn't it sound familiar? <laughs> Isn't this what the original sin is all about? Despite God's solemn warning, Adam and Eve stubbornly followed their self-will and willfully disobeyed God and ate the forbidden fruit, naively thinking that they would be okay, they would be like God, their eyes would be opened up, they would be able to live their life away and apart from God. This is an age-old human practice and, and tendency from the very beginning of the world. Like the prodigal son, we often squander our life and consume our life according to our self-will to please and satisfy ourselves as if our life were ours to begin with as spoiled sons and daughters of God. When the prodigal son wasted recklessly everything he had, a severe famine took place across the country and he began to be in need. The prodigal son didn't bother to save much money for rainy days, but he neglectfully and willfully used all he had for his momentary pleasures. Perhaps he was shouting, Yo, Lord, you only live once. What's the point of saving? What's the point of having retirement plan, right? Enjoy right now. <laughs> he became so desperate that he even had to feed himself with the paws the pigs were eating, and no one gave him anything. Proverbs 19.4 says, Wealth brings many friends, but the poor are left friendless. Ah. So what is Jesus trying to tell us about ourselves? When we live our life according to our will and our desire in the name of the pursuit of happiness away from God, we would eventually experience what? Poverty, starvation, hunger, bankruptcy, physical, mental, emotional, relational, or spiritual bankruptcy. The poverty is waiting for us. Even when we feel like we finally accomplished something at the peak of our life, what is waiting for us? 
we would end up tasting the bitterness of emptiness, vanity, deep inside. Why is that? Because we are created, we are wired to find true meaning and purpose of our life in whom? In God. What it means that in God alone we can find true rest and peace and fulfillment. When we distance ourselves and trying to push our own dreams according to our desire away from God, what, we, what is waiting for us at the end of that route is the vanity, the emptiness, despair. What happened to the prodigal son? Jesus said in the story in verse 17, but when he came to himself, ah, this poor child was starving, was getting hungry. He hit the rock bottom, then he came to himself. When he was dying of real hunger and thirst, he came to his senses. Do you hear the song, I'm, what I'm here? Desperado, why don't you come to your senses? Right? <laughs> the miserable condition of his life compelled him to come back to his senses. Ah, he suddenly realized that he didn't have to live like that. He still could go back home thinking that his father's servants would have bread enough. His life wasn't over yet. So he decided to go back to his father and he would say, Father, I have sinned against heaven and before you. I'm no longer worthy to be called your son. What was happening in his mind? He was obviously regretting of what he did and he was going through repentance. Longing and yearning for his reunion with his father. Uh, when everything is going all right, we don't really look for God. Uh, since we feel quite confident of being in control. But when life begins to throw us curveballs, hammers us with a series of harsh blows, we get overwhelmed and we are exhausted and we're dismayed. As we struggle to survive through the dark stormy night, we come to our senses, realize that there must be a better way of living. Ah. We can still go back to the source of our life, God. Mm, there still is a hope in the Lord. Suffering, painful though, humbles us. It brings us down to our knees, draw us near to God. If you sense and hear the silent whisper of the Holy Spirit in your heart. God, through the suffering and tribulation you go through, God brings you back to Him. The Holy Spirit stirs up your heart and helps you to see that there is still hope in the Lord. We've never experienced the contagion of this magnitude in our lifetime. We still, it still feels so real to me as if we were in a horror film together. Are we not hitting the rock bottom collectively together as a global community? Doesn't it bring us down to our knees? Isn't it a clear wake up call from the Lord, a call to repentance? Let me remind you, that a call to repentance is nothing other than an invitation to what? Forgiveness, healing, and reconciliation, and restoration. If you somehow feel the inner urge to come back to the cross and repent of your sin with your broken, your wounded heart, then that means that God hasn't finished with you yet. God wants to touch and heal your life, allow you to experience that restoration in your life. Ah. The repentance of the heart ushers in the renaissance of your soul. Remember that. Remember that. 
Someone said, you never know God is all you need until God is all you have. My brothers and sisters, you don't have to hit the rock bottom to come to this realization. Now is the time to come back to your senses and return to the Lord with your broken, contrite heart. The Lord is waiting for you. Some of you may think you don't really relate to this story of prodigal son <laughs> because you feel like you're not really lost, rebellious, or disobedient to God, and there may be nothing much to repent of compared with others. And listen to the word of God, Romans 3.10. Ah. Romans 3.10 says, There is no one who is righteous, not even one. There is no one who has understanding. There is no one who seeks God. Verse 23, all have sinned and fall short of the glory of God. Did you hear that? Everyone, all have sinned and fallen short of God's glory. Uh, simply put, there are two kinds of sins. Sins of commission and sins of omission. Sins of commission are doing what we should not do. Sins of omission are not doing what we should. <laughs> Did you hear that? Sins of commission are a, a willful act of doing what is evil in the sight of the Lord. Uh, violating and disobeying God's commitment, like lying, stealing, committing adultery, or murder. Sins of omission are failing to do what is right in the eyes of the Lord. Uh, refusing to share Jesus Christ with others, neglecting the opportunity to spread the gospel, failing to honor God with your life, your time, your energy resources, failing to honor your mother and father. Ah, uh, did you hear that? First John 1 John 1.8 First John 1.8 says this, if we say that we have no sin, we deceive ourselves, and the truth is not in us. If we confess our sins, He who is faithful and just will forgive us our sins and cleanse us from all unrighteousness. If we say that we have not sinned, we make Him a liar, and His word is not in us. Ah, did you hear that? So let us stop deceiving ourselves. Let us stop trying to rationalize or justify what we are doing, and why we are doing what we are doing. Instead, shall we acknowledge our guilt before the Lord, pleading guilty as charged, and confess our sins before the Lord, knowing that our Lord will touch and heal our wounded heart and forgive our soul. Hmm. prodigal son took courage to get up and go back to his father. And in today's passage, Jesus said in verse 20, Luke 15, 20, So he set off and went to his father, but while he was still far off, his father saw him and was filled with compassion. He ran and put his arms around him and kissed him. While his son was still far off, his father saw him. What does it mean? Father had been looking out, watching out, waiting for his son to return throughout the whole time. From when? From day one, his son was gone. Ah. So as soon as the father spotted his son coming back, he just ran with compassion, perhaps with tears of joy in his heart. In his eyes, ah. the son probably didn't even care about his father throughout the whole time. But the father cared about his son's safety and well-being throughout the whole time. That's a parent's heart. That's God, a heavenly father's heart toward us. He loved his son so much 
that his son's rejection hurt his heart and grieved his heart big time. And now he loved his son so much that his son's return brought tears of joy to his eyes. And the father said, verse 23, let us eat and celebrate for this son of mine was dead and is alive again. He was lost and is found. He was throwing a fish of homecoming for the return of his runaway son. When sinners come back to the Lord, when prodigal sons and daughters of God return to God, a heavenly father, God will throw a joyful fish of homecoming. And our father will shout, this child of mine was dead and is alive again. He was lost and is found. Do you hear the music? Oh, amazing grace, how sweet the sound that has saved a wretch like me. But now I'm found Was blind But now I see I can imagine and visualize a multitude of heavenly hosts of angels and, and the saints who will sing this song when a sinner comes back to the Lord. Through this familiar parable, Jesus points out a serious relationship issues with our God, exposing a sinful, rebellious tendency against God, and at the same time revealing God's steadfast love toward us. Psalm 103.8 says, The Lord is merciful and gracious, slow to anger, and abounding in steadfast love. Psalm 86 5 says, For you, O Lord, are good and forgiving, abounding in steadfast love to all who call on you. Psalm 136 1 says, Oh, give thanks to the Lord, for he is good, for his steadfast love endures forever. Did you hear that? The term God's steadfast love is mentioned here and there. The Hebrew word hesed is translated as steadfast love. Hesed is used 245 times in the Old Testament and 127 times in Psalms alone. Isn't God clearly telling us that we can trust and rely on His steadfast love? The Father's Long-suffering, patient, forgiving grace in the parable is what has said God's steadfast love is all about. It is God, a heavenly Father's heart toward us that does not know the limit, does not rest until God searches and finds us and brings us back home. Here's the great news, the gospel. God, a heavenly Father, so loved us that He gave His only Son, Jesus Christ. He sent His only Son to a faraway country where we are, so that our Lord may bring us back home through His sacrificial love. Our Lord Jesus Christ so loved us that He gave His own life on the cross for us, so that we may be forgiven and redeemed by His blood. The self-giving love of Jesus Christ, powerfully manifest on the cross, is what God, our Heavenly Father's steadfast love is all about. God is patiently waiting for us to come back to our senses and return to Him so that we may experience God's steadfast love has set toward us and celebrate a feast of homecoming. 
Jesus says in Luke 15, 7, I tell you, there will be more joy in heaven over one sinner who repents than over 99 righteous persons who need no repentance. Oh, God's people said, Amen. Every first Sunday of each month, we have a precious opportunity to gather around the Lord's table in spirit and prayer and receive the Holy Communion. Uh, this is a special time, especially uh, we are in Lent. Uh, as we are called to remember the ultimate sacrifice of our Lord on the cross, we are participating in Holy Communion in remembrance of what our Lord did for us. Shall we take a moment to prepare ourselves for receiving the Holy Communion? We'll go through the prayer of repentance together and also blessing upon the elements and then we'll celebrate together. Let us pray. God, our Heavenly Father, thank you for your long-suffering, patient, forgiving love toward us that has said in our entire life. Even though we believe we are saved by the precious blood of Jesus Christ, Lord, how often we take for granted that precious grace given to us, bought at the ultimate cost of our Lord's ultimate suffering on the cross. Have mercy upon us sinners, Lord. Enable us to live our life worthy of repentance and forgiveness and our Lord's ultimate sacrifice. Help us not to take our Lord's self-sacrificial love lightly. Allow us to come back to our senses, return to you with a humility and repentance so that we may experience a healing touch of our wounded heart. You're restoring power in our broken relationship. You're freeing the liberating grace upon our addiction issues, self-destructive habits. Allow your sons and daughters to expose our wounds and scars and bruises to your healing radiance. As we come back to you with a broken, contrite heart, so that we may experience the freedom we are looking for, the peace and rest we need, the celebration of homecoming in your arms, O oh Lord. We desire to run back to you, run into your arms. Receive us with your grace. Touch and heal our souls, Lord. We give thanks to you for, the, for giving us this opportunity to celebrate the Lord's Supper together. As we sit around the Lord's Supper in prayer and spirit, we desire to open our hearts to the presence of the Lord, the steadfast love has said of God for our souls. We pray that you will touch and bless and pour out your blessings upon these elements that we prepared at the church at home this morning. So that as we participate in Holy Communion, we may experience holy, mysterious union with you and celebrate joyful fellowship with each other as one family of faith in you. Indeed, a part of God's royal family together. Thank you, Lord. In Jesus' name, we pray. Amen. On the night in which Jesus Christ gave himself up for us, he had a meal with his disciples, which is later called Last Supper. At the Jewish traditional Passover meal, in remembrance of God's mighty saving act at the Exodus, Jesus said some elusive words with a strange gesture, which actually radically shifted the meaning of the meal. Jesus took the bread and gave thanks to God, our Heavenly Father, and broke the bread and gave it to his disciples and said, Take and eat. This is my body which is given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. When the supper was over, 
Our Lord took the cup and gave thanks to God, our Heavenly Father, and gave it to his disciples and said, Drink from this, all of you. This is my blood of new covenant, poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this as often as you drink it in remembrance of me. I'm pretty sure all the disciples around the dinner table were utterly puzzled. And they had no idea what Jesus said talking about but on the very next day they began to realize Jesus message through their last supper the broken bread spiritually foreshadowed Jesus own body broken on the cross for the forgiveness of our sins and the cup the juice or the wine in the cup spiritually foreshadowed Jesus own blood shed on the cross for the redemption of our souls so whenever we gather together around the Lord's table, we come with utter gratitude, remembering that ultimate sacrifice our Lord made on our behalf, in our place, so that we may receive eternal life in the Lord. Yes, this is the time to partake of the bread and drink from the cup. This is the body of Christ given for you. This is the blood of Jesus Christ given for you. I thank you so much for being with us this morning. I really appreciate your presence in honoring the Lord's Day together. Uh, I just realized that next Sunday, daylight saving time will begin. <laughs> Spring 4th, meaning we're going to lose one hour of sleep. No excuse for getting cranky, okay? <laughs> Just wanted to uh, mention that as a reminder. Go now in peace to love and serve the Lord. Come back to your senses. Return to the Lord, knowing that the Lord will welcome you with His open arms and warm heart and bless you with His forgiving love has said. The amazing grace of the Lord Jesus Christ, the steadfast love of God the Father, the joyful fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with you all. Amen.